If you've just tuned in, it's time for another episode of AI Africa, your antenna and tech on the continent with me, Yamuhetsu Musibili. Global gas, greenhouse gas emissions rose by 1.2% from 2021 to 2022, reaching 57.4 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent for the year. This is according to the UN Emissions Gap Report. In this week's segment, we take a look at COP28, the biggest annual climate conference where more than 200 world leaders gather to facilitate global agreements on the planet's imminent climate emergency. And we also probe how artificial intelligence can lead the charge in addressing climate change. But first, we have Chanel AI, Africa's first AI news reader, standing by with your update on what's trending in AI. Over to you. Thanks, Kiomo. And here's a wrap of what's trending in AI. US, UK and 16 other countries sign AI security agreement. 18 countries, including the United States and the United Kingdom, cinched the world's first global guidelines on safeguarding artificial intelligence against cyber attacks. The 20-page non-binding public agreement was developed by the UK's National Cyber Security Centre and the US Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, two cooperations endorsed by all G7 members. According to a senior US official, the pact is the first detailed international agreement on how to keep artificial intelligence safe from rogue actors, pushing for companies to create AI systems that are secure by design. Signed in London, over 100 industry, government and international partners such as Microsoft, the Alan Turing Institute and cyber agencies pledged to develop AI that keeps public safe from misuse. U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Director Jen Easterly said it was important that so many countries put their names to the idea, adding that open quote, the most important thing that needs to be done at the design phase is security, close quote. East African CEOs keen to invest in AI. The latest report by multinational professional services network KPMG shows that 72% of East African chief executive officers are prioritizing AI technology investment. The KPMG East Africa CEO Outlook survey of 2023 state CEOs are highly motivated by the technology's benefits such as fraud detection, cyber attack response, and faster analysis of data. However, 83% of respondents see AI as a double-edged sword, while 42% of business leaders cite ethical challenges as a concern in AI implementation. KPMG's chief executive officer and senior partner, Benson Dangyu says, artificial intelligence AI is shaking up things as it becomes increasingly ubiquitous in business and the society in general. That's all from Missional AI, you're up to date. Over to you, Ki Omo. Now that you know what is trending in AI, it's time to see how artificial intelligence can usher the world to a low-carbon future. COP28 follows a year of extreme weather events and occurs during a time in history dubbed the hottest on record globally, making the urgent need for action clearer than ever. I'll be speaking to multinational technology company IBM on some of their latest technologies, some of which have been developed in collaboration with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, commonly known as NASA. But for more on this, I am joined by Charity Wuyua, Director at IBM Research Africa. Charity, thank you so much and welcome to the show. Now, diving right in as the world convenes for COP28, it is hoped that the long-term goal of limiting the global rise in temperatures to 1.5 degrees will be met. And this was agreed upon in Paris in 2015. Now, looking to today, how is AI speeding up and scaling such efforts? Artificial intelligence has the potential to really improve the way that we um, process and analyze data and derive insights from it. And when you look at climate specifically, there's a couple of ways in which artificial intelligence data and the technologies that help us to process and analyze data can really improve our understanding of climate change. So when you think about um, being able to understand or comprehend what's happening in the space of climate change. This really is focusing on how we measure and account for carbon, for example. Secondly, when we think about 
in the mitigation space, you really can drive our understanding of the best methods of removing and storing carbon using um, AI methods, and we are doing that at IBM today, in the way of how we optimize and reduce emissions um, based out of very diff many different applications. This is also where AI can really help in our understanding of that. The third way is when it comes to adaptation, um, artificial intelligence driven technologies can really help us to understand how we can prepare to um, address some of the climate hazards that we are continuously experiencing and can really also help us in the way that we adopt. So if I maybe give you um, one specific example of how some developed and new technologies um, that are artificial intelligence related, um, the world has been focused on foundation models. And what foundation models today allow you to do is to um, develop a big model um, using data that comes, you know, for climate purposes. We look at geospatial data, we look at weather data. You can really take this big data sets, build fantastic models that are able to learn without human direction. They're able to build different connections. Based on these connections, we can now learn different things. And some examples of this is uh, we can start to develop very specialized tasks around um, hazard mapping, so things like flooding. Um, we can develop interesting um, use cases like wildfire prediction. We can learn about um, how we are using our land for forestation, reforestation, etc. And um, these are all technologies that are helping us to much understand how to address the climate um, change uh, challenges that we are, mm -hmm. that we are faced mm -hmm. with today. I appreciate that you've actually mapped out quite a few examples and speaking to um, imminent climate uh, challenges such as uh, forestation. But I'd actually like to move over to you know practical examples, specifically the work you're doing in IBM. Now moving it to the corporate front, how can businesses use AI-driven technologies to develop and implement strategies in their organizations that can help reduce their carbon emissions? Today we know that um, about 76% of CEOs are relying on um, operational data to make strategic decisions about their climate change goals or their net zero goals. However, only 45% are really confident uh, about the data that they have. So today, one tool that we've developed at IBM is Envisi, and essentially what it allows you to do is to collect data from the organization that from many different um, perspectives. So things like um, you know, their use of energy sources, um, any data that's related to your scope one, scope two um, emissions, and then we're able to analyze that data in a way that enables the organization one, to make um, decisions about where they are at, but also to be able to make some targets and understand what specific mm. activities they mm. need to be able to implement in order to reach their net zero targets um, for, um, for their organization in the immediate mm. term, but also in the longer term. Yeah. So that's one example for how um, mm. corporates can, um, can use some of the tools that we have. Um, I can give you perhaps additional examples of how mm. Um, you know, corporates, for example, that are really um, doing things in the supply chain space where they need to understand the impact of hazards, climate hazards yeah. um, in the work that they are doing. So uh -huh. one um, application that we've developed in that space, again, focused on this idea of geospatial foundation models where you get lots and lots of data. Mm. Specifically, uh, we've been working with NASA to give us access to satellite with um, with weather data. And with that, we're able to start to make um, flood predictions. And using mm -hmm. this um, flood flooding predictions, um, both companies and governments are able to take that kind of data and make, you know, whether it's supply chain um, decisions about what they want to do mm -hmm. um, to mitigate maybe a potential flood, mm -hmm. Um, if they want to, you know, do some rerouting, yeah. etc. 
but also from um, the government perspective, they're really mm, able to make some mm. strategic choices. Now, a key topic of contention at top, uh, COP28 is money in particular. In retrospect to previous uh, COP targets that uh, speaks of the loss and damages fund for developing countries. My question to you is, what is the role AI can play in addressing climate finance issues, particularly for pure, uh, poorer countries? I think we, for climate finance, I would think about it in, in, in two ways. One is obviously the ability for um, the ability for governments to be able to get insights that come out of artificial intelligence and use that to drive their resource allocation decisions. So how do they spend their money? You make some insights out of the models that you build, then you specifically apply them and say, help me to optimize the small amount of money that I have so that I can I can be able to use my money in a way that has the largest impact. AI can help you with that. The second part I, um, is in, actually maybe I'll give the example of some work that uh, we recent, we've just signed an MOU with the Kenyan government um, with the, you know, their special climate envoy. It allows us to use our geospatial technologies again to help to track um, forests the restoration efforts of a forest. And when we talk about climate finance, this is a space where people think about, you know, bringing in finance into the carbon credits market. Our technology enables um, the Kenyan government to drive their restoration efforts specifically for uh, adoption of water towers. But with the technology, now you can start to provide some monitoring, um, some reporting and verification for when somebody wants to put in um, any kind of financing to drive the um, the reforestation efforts. Kenya has a really ambitious target of 15 billion trees in the next 10 years, and getting a technology like this enables mm. them to verifiably um, mm. show the progress that they're making and therefore attract investment. And that's where we'd have to wrap up today's conversation. Thank you to my guest, Charity Woyua, Director at IBM Research Africa. This is how we wrap up today's episode, but you can catch us right here next week, Friday, on CNBC Africa. From me, it's goodbye for now, and it's back to Power Lunch Southern Africa.